she set up the tone very nicely that there are a lot of guidelines and it's so very confusing for all of us clinicians over here what to do, what to follow, which patient to refer and which patient to treat. So I will try to first uh, juggle it up and then Dr. Rakesh will solve the puzzle for you. So this will go in a dialogue sort of session where I will I will just juggle up things, I will I will put everything in front of you and then, then Dr. Rakesh will come and then he will put the pieces and then you will have a clear picture. So, so stay with us for next 35 minutes. Now screening. Regarding screening, there is, a, uh, there is a vast variation in various guidelines. The ASLD says that discourages screening in high-risk group because of the current lack of treatment option and they are unclear about the value of the screening test also. And they are unclear about the cost effectiveness. They just ask for a high index of suspicion for the presence of NFLD in diabetes mellitus type 2. Mind you, I just want to remind you, screening in general population is not recommended by any of the guidelines. So we should not in general, recommend to screen every of our diabetic patient. Whenever someone comes for a, a camp or something like that, we should be very cautious whom we are screening. The Asian guidelines have a non-committal view and they do not explicitly recommend screening in risk groups, and which is type 2 diabetes and obesity, but merely described it as worth considering. Regarding the specific screening recommendation, only the Latin American and European guidelines have something which is specific. And both the guidelines, they recommend abdominal ultrasound as the initial examination to determine the presence of steatosis. Now the serum fibrosis tests are appropriate again by these both the guidelines for further risk stratification. And Latin American guidelines, they decidedly recommend determination of FIF4 and NFS score, which I will come to later. Elastography again is a technique which is more reliable method and considered secondary due to the lack of availability. Still in India, it is very patchy. We don't have that much availability of it. So the difference is, Latin American guidelines says to screen patients who are, uh, those who are with repeatedly altered liver enzymes with them, have a feature of metabolic syndrome, or a obesity with a BMI of more than 30. Minded BMI more than 30 should be screened. European recommendations are very clear with patients with insulin resistance and patients with metabolic syndrome, especially those, we, those who manifest type 2 diabetes, they should be screened regardless of the level of liver enzymes. So these are the two discrepancies with regarding the screening in various the guidelines. Now, how to screen? So value of ultrasonography uh, of the liver in NFLD is actually established and it is a widely available cost-effective and radiation-free method, we all know. And steatosis below 10% of hepatocyte is usually not detected by this. So it is very difficult to pick up the early steatosis which is there. Now in moderate and severe hepatic steatosis, good sensitivity is achieved with specificity of up to 98%. So best results are seen above liver fat content of 12.5%. This is the catch with this ultrasonography. Now non-invasive measurement by elastography, it uses an ultrasound-based shear wave elastography, which we are all almost are aware of these days. And it actually detects the liver stiffness, how stiff is our liver, to exclude the advanced liver fibrosis and cirrhosis in NASH. Now, in addition, it offers to quantify the fat content also by a percentage. So it has a good sensitivity and it is achieved with specificity up to 98%. Again, it is valuable about 12.5% of liver fat. But again, in a country like India, it is very heterogeneous. It is not so much available. So broad screening is usually not possible with this. Now, again, coming to the next step, which is the CT scan or MRI, the CT should not be used as a primary screening method because of radiation exposure, and it is not have been proven to much value. MRI can be used to determine both the fat content and the fibrosis stage, and it can be done quite reliably for that also. So again, doing that using proton density fat fraction has high linearity and precision with simple post-processing. But it is usually not recommended for large group because of cost constraints. It measures the liver stiffness significantly more reliably than the ultrasound-based elastography techniques. Now, these are the various algorithms. These are really tricky. This slide is really tricky because it is having all the sort of scores which are there for the uh, uh, measurement of uh, actually steatosis and how to screen patients. Some contains AST, ALT, some contain platelet, triglyceride, BMI, waist, hip ratio, age, sex, and other things. But the thing is, it is very patchy and tricky. So the scores are very much available, but there are mainly five scores which we routinely see. They are NFS, FIP4, EPRI score, FON score, and BART score. The first two, NFS and FIP4, are the superior to other three scores. So these two scores are also suitable for screening patients 
who have a normal ALT and it can be easily done in our OPD settings. So FIP4 score which was initially devised, it was devised for hepatitis C uh, induced liver fibrosis but now it has been validated for NASH also so we can very clearly use it in our day to day practice. It also has an additional advantage over NFS that no albumin value is needed in FIP4 score. So it, it makes the laboratory workup less complex. But both the scores have lower specificity and patients more than 65 years of age. And the higher proportion of false positive screen patients comes up when we screen it for more than 65 years of age. Now, the referral guidelines, they are again differing in European and Latin guidelines. In European recommendation, both high risk and intermediate risk patients should be referred to hepatologist. Latin American guidelines say only the case for patients more than 50 years of age with diabetes or obesity should be referred. And how the uh, high risk and intermediate risk is determined, this is how we do it with the help of FIF4 score. So this is how the FIF4 score is calculated based on age, AST, ALT and platelets. This is a very simple formula which is given. So you just put these uh, values into this algorithm, it is very av readily available on internet and you just get the values. If it is less than 1.3, it has a low probability. It is 1.3 to 2.67, it has an intermediate probability and it, if, if it is having a more than 2.67 value, it is having a high probability. So coming again back to that slide, the Latin American uh, says only for cases of patient more than 50 years, but European recommendation says high and intermediate. That means the patient, those who are having a FIP4 score, FIP score more than 1.3 should be referred according to the European guidelines. Now what does this do? It helps actually in reducing the burden of testing. In general population, if we do the primary test score and some uh, suppose 20 to 30 percent patients have a FIP4 score which is higher for uh, further screening and when, then we do the secondary test which is elastography, out of that we go to patients which are, which are having elastography which is not in range for 3 to 5 percent of patients. So that, that actually reduces the cost of uh, screening in country like India and for only those patients who are then having a uh, elastography which is not in range, we can go for biopsy. So this is again uh, cutting that uh, graph into a more splittable format. Once we do the computer-based score, which is the FIP4 score or NFL score, the low risk are clearly excluded. Then we go to the true positive, which are intermediate and high risk, and then they are referred, and then the secondary testing in elastography is done, and then they are again stratified based on the intermediate and high risk for liver biopsy or workup for liver cirrhosis. So they can get the specific treatment. So that is how we can save the cost of screening in our patients in India. Now, moving forward, the algorithm for screening, again, which I have shown you, is very simple. A FIF4 score of less than 1.3 warrants the patient to be in category 1 when he is of low risk for advanced fibrosis. A primary prevention of NASH and fibrosis is what is required. FIF4 more than 1.3, we should go for fibroscope scan. Uh, if it is having a LSM value of less than 8 kPa, we again shift him to category 1. If it is having a LSM uh, score of 8 to 12, we shift him to category 2, where we need to give him intensified lifestyle modification, anti-diabetic drugs, preferably SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonist or pioglitazone, and a biannual fibro scan. If more than 12, management same as category 2, but especially trephthal is required, screening for cirrhosis and HCC surveillance is also required for these patients. This is again the same slide uh, which I have shown you. Now, after this stratification, how to manage and what are the ASC recent guidelines, Dr. Rakesh will brief us about it. <laughs>